Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Welcome. So, you know, there are a few other parties on this ballot this fall, particularly for seats like governor. Did you know that? No, it's not the Green Party. No, it's not the Socialist Party. No, it's, it's, it's not. It's not the Communist Party. No, it's it's Libertarians and, and some Independents. We're going to talk to them representing the Independent vote, or I will call it the unaffiliated vote. Jason Clark, thank you for, for coming on. Thank you guys for having me. Nice haircut. Thank You're you. You're going to lose it all. You're going to look like me. Two years, tops. <laughs> Two years. From the Libertarian Party, James Brown, I love your music. I love your hat even more. Thank you. Uh, you, want, uh, you. You bumped your head, so you're not just trying to be stylish here. Let's just, but it works. But it works. It works. It works for you. Uh, libertarians need that. All right, let's 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 talk about third parties. With Tom Tancredo jumping into yet another third party, the American Constitution Party here in Colorado, we now know more about third parties. We're going to get more third party votes this year, assuming he stays in, and at the taping of this, he has not uh, pulled out. We're going to have a lot of third party votes. Why are third parties important? Let's let's start over here. Why Why not stick to those wonderful two R and D parties. We have primaries and assemblies and caucuses to try to bring out the best people in those two parties. Why not just leave it there? Because they haven't uh, put, put forth any viable candidates, especially in Colorado. You know that. James knows that. The people know that. If the Republicans put forth a viable candidate, that'd be one option, but they haven't. The other thing is, I'm wait, not against... Wait, wait, wait. You, 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 against... you threw your hat in the ring here well before uh, the, the debacle with the Republican Party this year, correct? Yes, but let me tell you why. I'm a professional investment advisor. I do the research on things. I researched the other candidates way before I thought about getting into this process. Did I know what was going to happen with McGinnis? No, but I researched his background, and I researched Dan May's background. And I determined that I was a better candidate. Let's bring it over here. Tell me now, the Libertarian as a uh, th as a third party has been around. I remember it back in the '70s. Mm -hmm. Was it Ed Clark who who ran the first kind of sizable uh, or late '70s presidential campaign? And the Libertarian Party has been around as uh, a third party here in Colorado. Actually, Libertarians in Colorado have a bigger footprint than they do nationally. That is, you have at least 38 registered Libertarians here <laughs> compared to the whole 103 nationally. That's a that's a pretty good right. That's a pretty good average. And that is one of the laws. I like about Colorado is that the ballot access isn't as draconian as someplace like Oklahoma or somewhere like that. So you actually can compete when my biggest thing isn't that the candidates, it's the parties. I, I oppose both parties and I think libertarians are the best of both parties. For people who don't understand the Libertarian Party, I think there's a lot of confusion. When, when you say Green Party, you know you're talking about whack job environmentalists who want social engineering through government. Or if you say the Communist Party or the Socialist Party, you know what you're getting. Libertarian people sometimes think, well, these are just guys that want to uh, legalize pot and, and uh, they don't like taxes. But there's more to it. Tell me, give me the brief. Well, it's, it's free minds, free markets, free people, free markets, you know, however you want to think of it is social... Anarchists. You're anarchists. No, not at all. We're limited government, and I'll grant you that today's environment, political environment, makes any limits to government seem like anarchy because they, the government has just expanded so greatly that I'm not sure how we're going to be able to reel it in. It's, it's on a collision would, course for... Would a thumbnail description of the Libertarian Party be... We are strongly fiscally conservative, but we are also strongly um, culturally uh, liberal. That is, you have a lot of choice in both lifestyle, you're not an anti-gay, anti-abortion, uh, uh, anti-drug group, but you're also an anti-tax group. Would that be a good right. thumbnail? Right. And for example, the drug war, it's mainly economics. It's just not working. So it's not that I... I know. No I bought some pot today. It was $100. <laughs> you know, before... Oh, never mind. <laughs> the point is, is that had it been working, and, and there's a lot of people on the right who opposed the drug war, uh, you know, the Will, William F. Buckley, the uh, Milton Freemans, you know, I think Tancredo opposes it, Ron mm -hmm. Paul, um, because it's not working economically. It's We're just flushing money down the toilet. So at some point, when does bad policy get to stop? I mean, how, how many, you know, tragedies does there have to All be? Right. Let me get to my frustration about third parties. And I get this all the time because every time there is an election, the Greens and the Libertarians and everybody else says, you've got to put me on my show. And I say, I say, no, no, you're not going to win. And they say, well, I'm never going to win if you don't give me the exposure and, and get on radio and get on television. Um, I don't want to break your hearts here, gentlemen, but 
Do both of you know you're not going to become the next governor of Colorado? I totally disagree with you. I All think right. I will. I think I'm going to win. All right, tell me how. I'm a better candidate. I have a better platform. And I'm a better leader, and I don't worry about the other guys. You're better looking. I'm going to give you. I'm going to Thank give you, you that very much. much. How are you going to? How are you going to? Back here a little bit. Um, how are you going to? <laughs> Stay on that side of the table, hey, please, hey, John. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Hands maybe a little, little flattered. But <laughs> how are you going to raise the millions of dollars it's going to take to beat either Hickenlooper or Mays or Tancredo? How why are you going to get that takes, name? Is, why do you say it takes millions of dollars? Are you, are you familiar with Mayor Bloomberg in New York? I am. Okay. How much money did he spend? Over hundred million dollars of his own money. He almost got beat. And I know the guy didn't win, but he but he was competitive. Spent, I think, one twentieth of the cost. The internet, innovation, yeah. one technology. One twentieth of the cost is still five million dollars. So uh, you need comparatively. Something. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. I think the range is two hundred fifty to six hundred thousand. Okay. Um, I've got some own, my own money that I'm considering putting in. Really? How much? Based on sell your house like Romanoff? Uh, I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> All right. So you're, you, you seriously believe you not only can but will win? Absolutely. Okay. I don't. I, I, I'm a competitor. I don't do things for second place. I don't. I don't. I'm not interested in five or ten percent. I'm interested in a winning strategy, and I think we have a winning strategy in place. And it's also interesting, you know, if you use a sports analogy, you know, how do these people know that I, this hasn't been my strategy the whole time? As far as I want a little them to bit of think that I'm never going to win. A little bit win. of football strategy here. All right. And, and then the big if, guns come in. All right. Uh, let, you know, there's, bring, there's some war. We can talk about the art of war, too, if you want. Let me, let, me, yeah. let me bring it over to the libertarian <laughs> side. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the libertarian history, and you've never won for a big seat like state governor. Right. Are you going to win this, this time? Or yes. do you know? Oh, good God, people, <laughs> come on. I've, here, I've known I, alcoholics that have better skills at recognizing right. denial than you two. But the, here's the thing is, yeah, the odds are stacked against us, but we can't give up. We can never give up. And that is just, that alone is so critical of what we have in government of just, oh, it's just too, we can't fix it, but we can. It's going to take some time, and it's going to be hard, and there's going to be some tough decisions to be made to fix a lot of the damage, but it can be undone. You're not going to win. You're not going to win. You will go bald someday. You're bald now. It's going to happen. I'll put 20 bucks on it right now. But let's, let's, let's talk about the other side of this. I love the Green Party. The Green Party helped Al Gore lose. If it wasn't for, the, uh, if it wasn't for Ralph Nader, who ran in Florida and took enough votes away, mostly, almost all, from Al Gore, George Bush wouldn't have been elected president. Can, can we agree on that? And that was a good thing, you're saying? It was a better thing than Al Gore. But can we agree that's what happened? We can. can we, give me a nod. Give me a like. Maybe. All right, I'm going to take that maybe as a yes. sure. People yeah, have counted sure. the beans. All right, you count the beans that way. Now, if you're a center-left voter here in Colorado, that is, if, if, you're gonna, if you lean towards the left, you're a little bit more squishy than probably all three of us, um, what are your choices? Who are your choices? You've got the mayor of Denver. You don't have a Green Party candidate this year. You don't have a commie. You don't have a socialist. You, you don't have some huge union party. But if you're right of center, and I'm not just talking Republican, I'm just talking mildly right of center, you now have Mays, Tancredo, James uh, uh, Brown, and, and, and Jason Clark. We got four guys to split up the right of center vote. You know where I'm going with this. I believe our team, the right of center team, screws up now. They've learned their lesson because they lost the presidency. And now we've got four guys basically on our side. We're going to lose the governorship because of this. Your thought. Tell me, me. tell me I'm wrong. 